Cast. Last week on Ghost Hampton, Berto, the wannabe drug kingpin Georgie is surveilling, is alone with the gorgeous Chantal, his biggest moneymaker. Now she expects Berto to make her a legitimate wife. Lyle and Flo find old Glenn dead on his porch. Then Flo collapses, attacked by a mad possum. Berto comes out to meet Georgie after her finger was pricked by Chantal's Haitian voodoo doll. Georgie decides to get out and meet Scarface head on. Ma'am, can I help you? Are you the business owner? I'm Berto. Berto Peña. I'm the manager here while my uncle's away. Is there a problem? No, just some suspicious activity reported in the area recently. I'm watching this stretch of road. Have you seen anything unusual? No, no, I haven't, ma'am. You are, uh... I'm Detective Hall. So is the limo business busy this time of year? Not so much, but I can catch up on paperwork. It's late, no? I was supposed to meet my wife tonight, but no luck. I'm trying to file my uncle's taxes. Hmm. That's good of you. Berto shows interest in the burlap doll on Georgie's windshield. Do you want that thing off? It could foul up your wipers. Uh, sure. Thanks. She sees Berto already has a gold knife with a pearl handle out. He cuts the voodoo doll free, pockets the knife, and hands it to Georgie like it's nothing. Its mouth is sewn shut, buttons for eyes, and she shows no real interest in it. Kids this time of year, always with pranks. Halloween is coming. It is. Well, I'd better get back to it. Berto abruptly reaches into a jacket pocket, and Georgie flinches involuntarily. As he pulls out a business card for South Fork Limo, she spots the handle of a Glock pistol. You can reach me here if anything. Here's mine. Call me any time if you see anything suspicious. He takes the card and makes a friendly goodnight wave as he heads for his office. Walking across the gravelly road, Berto looks at Georgie's card and smiles to himself. There's a spot of her blood on the back. Chantal's doll drew first blood. She'll be glad. And he enjoyed meeting this cop. Not so much a bitch. Berto's imagination runs to an alternate reality where Georgie works as one of his girls. Tall, good looking, lots of makeup. Do something with that blonde hair. Could make him some money. And he imagines showing Georgie his impressive new rifle. Exterior, Lyle's porch, later. The cloudy skies are brightening as the sun tries to start a new day. It's been raining off and on, and much of the toilet paper festooning Lyle's property has fallen to earth in wet clumps. Lyle had passed out on his collapsed porch glider, and the police at Big Frank's prodding let him sleep while they did things like outline the positions of two dead bodies and drink coffee with donuts. Lyle's eyes adjust to the sight of Glenn Stanley's outline in the middle of his porch, and it's deeply disturbing. The porch is crowded with cops. Big Frank, too. No Georgie, thank God. He sees News 12's TV van has pulled up near his curb with production people. Mr. Hall, good morning. Lyle blinks at all the activity, disoriented in his usual position near the floor. He was asleep a little over an hour. Flo's body is gone. Glenn's, too. Is Georgie here? No, just got off duty. Listen, I need to get your statement. You feel ready for that? Do I have to go downtown? Nah, can you sit up at least? Lyle squirms a bit and pulls himself up to a seated position on the glider that crashed to the floor. The glider flow died on. Okay, hit me. How old did you know Glenn Stanley? One of the ghost following campers. Lived in a tent in my lawn. Made good coffee. And Florence Hendricks? She's a clairvoyant I met recently. Roped me into my ill-fated television appearance. Lyle leaves out the part where Flo fell in love with him. Do you know how she died? She's at the coroner's now. 
looked to me like sudden death due to coronary. There was a severe bite mark on her calf. Nice work with the umbrella. Frank, I need to not be here. Big Frank gives Lyle a hand and stands him up. The front door is wide open. Interior, Lyle's living room, continuous. A little wobbly, Lyle makes it into his living room with the sergeant and sits on the couch. There's a cardboard tray of coffees from Gertie's, and Frank gives Lyle one, still hot. Frank paces around on the phone with his superior, and Lyle decides to call on a higher power, Father Matteo Sherry. Lyle, tell me you're all right. I'm okay, Father. Thanks. But I was the only person not dead on my porch last night. Monsignor Hannon and I are very concerned. Your house is on the TV news. We are thankful to God you are still alive. Please, how can I help you? Father, first, thank you for reviving me the other night outside, Old Vic. Don't mention it. No problem. The pleasure was all mine. See how I'm learning American. You're a sponge. Yes. And now TV people are calling on me, too. Monsignor Hannon is keeping them away. Lyle imagines naive, handsome Father Matteo in Silk's hot hands. Live cameras trained on him, answering probing questions about Lyle Hall. I hope he does, Father, for your sake. So, a question. What was wrong with me when we were inside Old Vic? I was cursing at you? Yes. What was I saying? It was Greek. Profanity. I don't know any Greek. Is that a problem? It is. Can you come to my house? I'm afraid it's possessed. Your house is? Or maybe I am. I am coming. We will talk. Lyle disconnects and sighs. <sighs> Better to know for sure than go around worried you're possessed, right? Right? Trying to process last night's events... Lyle stares blankly out his open front door. His slate walkway to the porch is slick with rain and studded with wads of wet toilet paper. Odd people, curiosity seekers, are standing around gawking. One guy looks like old Glenn Stanley's grizzled old friend. Men in uniform are tacking up a tarp around his porch, creating a blue plastic casbah. More yellow police tape is zigzagging around his stoop. The police must really love that stuff. Then his phone lights up. Noah Cray. He feels moved to answer. Noah. So that Italian translation you asked me about? Way past that now. So I see. So everyone sees. You'd think your TV appearance was enough. It was just a segment on one little show. Oh, so you haven't heard of the internet? where the whole world watches and shares unusual videos and comments on them and then comments on the comments. Am I appreciated? You're viral. And your growing population of followers is as yet unaware of the two tragic deaths on your porch, no less. But local news 12 viewers are aware. I'm not going to add any fuel. How about that contractual obligation you unwittingly signed? I told you about that? That vampira woman tells TV reporters about it when they ask if she's having you back on TV. <sighs> Silk. Her. Have you spoken to your daughter yet? We chatted last night. Before those deaths? On your porch? Yes. The laws of physics say you should expect a reaction of appropriate intensity. I do. There are other things going on with you, too. Things the internet does not yet know. Am I correct? Actually, there are. Such as? Can I trust you not to blab? If you cannot trust your old friend from elementary school... Wow. Well, I need to tell someone. Listen. Father Mateo was coming over. Oh, just what you need amid the chaos. Are you serving tea? I'm asking him if I need an exorcism. Noah pauses and digests that revelation. I could answer that for you now, but go with a trusted source. No, I'm serious. I'm afraid what he might say. 
I'm coming over. No. The chaos. Remember? To get you out of there. Lyle looks out his open front door and is startled. <sighs> Gotta go. It's Georgie. Walking up the slate path to Lyle's porch, Detective Georgie Hall is very impressive and all business. Her charcoal pantsuit, her white blouse still crisp despite her long duty last night. Her head of blonde hair pulled back in a no-nonsense bun. Georgie climbs the four steps to the porch like she lives here. Oh, she did live here. Lyle is quite visible sitting on the living room couch, but Georgie makes her way to Frank. Anything from the medical examiner? Not yet. The signs were natural causes for the woman. The old man, unknown. Georgie looks around the porch. There are many cops and other detectives standing around. She nods to some. There's a random umbrella. She steps toward the outline of Glenn Stanley's body. She turns again to Frank. Where was the woman's body? Uh, she was on the glider. The glider? Apparently, she was attacked by a rabid animal. Your father says it was a possum. She received a deep gash in her calf. Definitely an animal bite. And the glider? The deceased collapsed onto the glider, where your dad was sitting. Their combined weight made it collapse. At that point, my theory now, she, Florence Hendricks, had a coronary. Georgie tries to process Frank's description. And my father was... Police on duty came onto the porch and found her in your father's arms. Georgie scratches a raised eyebrow. She worked with your father on that TV show. But she wasn't the one he was infatuated with. Correct. The star of the show is alive and well and doing morning news interviews. Claiming she'll have Lyle back on her show tonight. Correct. Great. What was the old guy doing here? Don't know yet. Lyle says he was a friendly old man. Apparently the animal, possibly a rabid possum, was gnawing on his thigh. Bloodstain. Possums are known to feed on carrion. Dead meat. Georgie does not flinch at that. Excuse me a minute, Frank. Georgie moves through the doorway into the living room. Interior. Lyle's living room, continuous. Lyle knew Georgie was out on the porch, the crime scene, but her sudden entrance and her expression give him a start. What the fuck, Dad? What the fuck? Georgie, I... Shut it, Dad. I'm not listening. Georgie briefly looks around the living room, taking in the never-vacuumed carpet, smudgy windows... Dirty dishes piled in the adjacent dining room, weird exercise equipment, and verboten coffee cups everywhere. I am way past embarrassed by you. You've failed me as my father. You're fired. I'm disowning you, capiche? Outside are professionals I have to work with, and as far as they're concerned, my own father is ready for the loony bin. No wonder I get harassment. She takes a breath. Georgie! Please. This is the house I grew up in. How'd you ever know? You were never here. And look what you've done with the place. I've seen nicer crack dens. And that porch? I used to play on that porch as a little girl. Swing on that glider. You only know it's where I delivered your lasagnas. Well, we're way past that, too. Your allegiance is quite clear. In love with a witch who's younger than me grotesque deaths right on my childhood porch, and now you're going back on TV with Morticia. That's what your word is worth. Well, I'm out. Out. Understand? Georgie, I just... I love you! Georgie steps toward Lyle unexpectedly. As she does, he has instant flashbacks from her girlhood. Heartbreaking lost moments with a curly-headed tomboy. He snaps back to the present. Georgie's in his face. He sees how tired and careworn she's become. I love you, girl! Bullshit! Fuck you, Dad. You don't even know what love is. As a teenager, I knew you fooled around on Mom, even when she was dying. So you ruined my adolescence, too. Georgie pivots on her heel and heads for the door. It's Lyle's only chance. He raises his hands imploringly. 
Georgie, wait, wait. I must tell you, an attempt will be made on your life soon. She glances back at her miserable father. Right. Thanks for poisoning my career, too. Lyle's hands fall. His head drops. Outside, Georgie pauses briefly for a word with Big Frank. All done. Didn't hear a thing. Without further discussion, Detective Hall is down the stairs and out to her unmarked car. The one with the shriveled ghost condom. As Lyle watches her pull away, his phone throbs with texts. He looks at it for some relief. Messages. Two people are on their way to pick him up. One is in the parish church car. The other is in the Fearcom van. 